Uh, before I do any reverbs, I want to listen through with the bass. So let's just listen to the bass and the uh, final and the drums, the final drum group. And you'll hear how beautiful the bass playing is on this. And I mean that sincerely. Russell did a beautiful job. He's an excellent bass player. And um, this sounds great. I'm just going to turn it up on the channel for now. It's just got a lovely sound to it, a lovely feel. I don't know what bass he used on it. Russell, if you're still watching this, um, let us know what bass you used. Um, and as far as I can remember, that was a pretty straight DI. Um, yeah, it didn't do anything beforehand compression-wise or anything like that. So um, while we were listening to that, you might have seen me duplicate the track. So I've got an identical copy to it underneath. Um, and as with previous videos, I'm going to split it into um, into sort of two channels, really. One with the sub and one with the top end. So I'm going to start here um, just with a Q2 mono plug-in. Um, and this is just going to be a, uh, a high pass, uh, high pass and a low pass. Um, so I'm going to probably roll it up... Um, somewhere around 60 hertz I'd imagine let me because we know that the bass drum kind of stops having the bottom end around uh, 60 hertz um, I was kind of cutting a lot of that out so the, the punch is is lower than that in the bass drum so I don't want it to interfere with the bass drum so I'm gonna do the low cut about 60 hertz then bring the top down Turn the whole volume up. So that's just the sub there. Um, and I'm going to put uh, an SSL compressor over it. And I'm going to turn the attack time up because it's a bass sound. Bass sounds have, particularly sub of bass, have uh, longer wavelengths so um, if you have too much of a short attack time it's just going to kill the bass note it's not going to happen and I don't want too much just sort of a little tickle every now and again see every now and again it just grabs uh, I think the bass was Dean's jazz bass yeah I think you're right actually Russ I've got um, pictures of you playing all sorts of different bass but I don't know which song um, was which I know we used Dean's Jazz on Falling, didn't we? As well, oh, I was listening to that song the other day, it's a good song, anyway. So you can see it just gets the loudest notes, but you kind of get this nice bed of sub coming from that. I might even bring in the top end a bit more so it's even more subby. And then on the other channel, I'm going to roll off all the bottom ends. So I'm going to go totally opposite on this one. Um, I'm going to just use a Q1 at the beginning. And just roll that right up. So you're getting all that top end skank.
And uh, on this, I'm going to put um, an Amplitube plug-in, Amplitube 4, um, just to give it some realism, try and make it sound like it's uh, gone through a guitar amp. Now, this plug-in always takes ages to load. I click on that, and it's still not loaded, and there it is. Um, very, very good plug-in, though. By far the best. I don't want a bass amp model. I want um, something that's like a guitar amp that's filthy. That looks uh, like a filthy guitar amp. So that's just the top end. And I'm going to listen to that with the sub, the bottom end, and we can um, see whether they need switching in any kind of phase way. So that's one of them out of phase. It's slightly fatter when they're in phase, but because I've split the frequencies quite nicely, it's not um, they're not actually conflicting with each other. So let's have a listen through to the drums and the bass just together now with that sort of done like that. How much more punchy is that? I mean, that's lovely. Now I've got some music here, I'm going to work on the snare a bit more. 